Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Zakul, Harbinger of Nihilotha in the Eternal Palace. Yes, this four-phase boss has you travelling between different realms at certain points throughout the fight. Players in different realms cannot see or interact with each other, but certain boss abilities will occur in all realms simultaneously. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's start off with the basic abilities the boss casts in all phases. Right at the beginning of the fight, darkness will appear around the edges of the room. If you stand within this, you take a shit ton of damage and you'll die very quickly. You need to make sure you avoid it, however there are two boss abilities that might force you into it. When the boss casts Crushing Grasp, this will spawn a portal randomly around the edge of the room. A few moments later, a big tentacle will shoot across the room from the portal, dealing a burst of damage whilst knocking back anyone who is caught in its path. We just spread wall markers around the room and use them as reference points to call out where the tentacle is coming from and where the safe zones are. As the tentacle always passes through the middle of the room, you'll always want to keep the boss around the edges. And as for the second ability is the Dread debuffs. Three of these debuffs are placed on random DPS every 80 seconds or so. Whilst the debuff is on you, you are feared for 10 seconds. During this time, you can potentially run into the darkness around the edges of the room. So ideally, you'll want to dispel it before people get there. The issue with this is that when the debuff expires or is dispelled, it does a huge amount of raid damage. If all three are removed at the exact same time, you're very likely to one-shot your raid. However, this can be countered by one damage reduction healing cooldown, such as a Spirit Link, a Barrier, or an Aura Mastery. We set up one of these cooldowns each and every time these debuffs came in and instantly dispelled them either using a Master Spell or a Tremor Totem. In lower raid sizes where you don't have all of these cooldowns available, you'll instead want to stagger them and use things like Life Grip to get the feared players back towards the raid. The one last ability to mention that the boss uses in all phases is for the tanks, and this is his Mind Tether cast. This will tether the tank to the closest target, making it so 50% of all damage taken by one target is also dealt to the other as shadow damage. The tanks just need to make sure they're stood close to each other to make sure the debuff is applied to them and not any of the melee DPS. When you're linked, never move more than 12 yards away from each other, as this will increase the reflected damage even more on the off tank. So you'll want to try and move around as a team as much as possible. And even more importantly, make sure you remain in the same realm, otherwise you'll be stunned for 10 seconds whenever it's cast. Right, moving on into phase 1. So this phase only lasts until 85%, and there is only one unique mechanic you need to deal with. The boss will summon three portals, and when these time out a few seconds later, they'll do damage and fear anyone inside their targeting circle, so make sure you move from them. This also spawns a summoner at each location. These adds don't need to be tanked, and instead will just cast Dark Tear. This is a super long cast, and if it ever goes off, it'll do a huge amount of raid-wide damage. Whilst casting, they will also periodically spawn horrific vision adds. On normal mode, these adds just melee hit people for a little bit of damage, so just drag them under the boss and cleave them down. However, on Heroic, these adds start with a 30 stack debuff which increases the damage they take and reduces their movement speed. This debuff loses its stacks over 60 seconds, at which point the ad will transform into a Nightmare, which hits like an absolute truck and almost certainly will wipe you. That said, you kinda still deal with them the exact same way you did on Normal, just cleave them down. You just might need to keep an eye on their stacks and swap to them if you don't have a very high cleave comp. But primarily, most of your damage should be going into the Summoners, because you'll want to kill them before entering Phase 2 as Phase 2 is pretty much a race against time. Now this is because the boss will drag everybody into the Fear Realm. Whilst within this realm, everyone gains a stack of Hysteria every 15 seconds. Now this Hysteria dot doesn't do too much damage, but once your raid is at around 9 to 10 stacks, this is really going to stress your healers, especially as they still need to deal with the Dread. So ideally you want to push out of this Fear Realm as soon as you possibly can. Now this is made easier as the boss has gained a few new abilities whilst in the Fear Realm. The main one being Maddening Eruption, which spawns a zone generally on the opposite side of the room. This zone explodes after around 25 seconds, dealing raid-wide damage. If you put the boss in it when it explodes, people will only take damage if they stand within the zone, and the boss gains a debuff that increases the damage he takes by 30% for 20 seconds. So when the zone spawns, drag the boss into it and then annihilate the boss when the damage increase is active. As to get out of the phase even faster, we saved all cooldowns and bloodlust for the first maddening eruption. This allowed us to get back to the normal realm with far fewer hysteria stacks, but this might not be necessary if your group has some solid heroic gear from the instance. The only other mechanic in the fear realm is manifest nightmares. This is a debuff placed on two players that makes them pulse out AoE damage over 6 seconds. Each tick of the debuff also leaves behind a pool on the ground which deals high ticking damage if you stand in it. So if you get the debuff, just move away from everyone else. Just be careful of any crushing grasp tentacles whilst you're moving around. Now at the end of the debuff, a single vision ad will spawn from each player. Once again, just drag it under the boss and cleave it down. Now when the boss reaches 70%, Phase 3 will begin. Now the entire raid will not change realm, they'll remain within the fear realm during Phase 3, but the boss will gain one new ability, which is Delirium's Descent. This creates three zones directly in front of the boss. You need to have one player stand in each zone, otherwise the boss deals a ton of raid-wide damage at the end of his cast. 
Now you should have DPS who gain a lot of damage from haste to stand in these zones, as they will be transferred to the Delirium Realm when the cast ends. Now whilst within this realm, you have 80% haste at all times, but you are hostile to allies and gain stacks of hysteria every 6 seconds. As you have no healer, you may just eventually die in here, as there is no way to get out of the realm during phase 3. Fortunately, if you do die in the Delirium Realm, you'll just re-enter the Fear Realm with a dispellable 10 second stun. So if this does happen, healers just need to quickly top you up while they dispel the debuff. Now whilst inside, the DPS will need to dodge the Crushing Grass tentacles and avoid the patches left behind by their Manifest Nightmare debuff players. They should also avoid slamming a ton of damage into the vision adds until they've been picked up by the tank, otherwise you're just going to die and leave the realm early. On Heroic, you also have to dodge tentacle slams that will stun and damage you if you remain within their slam location. So the fight continues like this until Zakul reaches 50%, at which point Phase 4 starts. The moment the phase starts, everybody is dragged back into the normal realm. It's at this point that the raid will have its highest amount of hysteria stacks, so you may want to chain healing cooldowns until they've dropped, especially if your timing was off and you enter this phase just as they was refreshed. So the boss has all of his usual phase 1 abilities, except a couple of them have been modified. Dread is now Manic Dread. The difference here is that when it expires, it will now spawn a zone. This zone stays dormant and it explodes a couple of seconds later. You've just got to make sure that you move out of the targeting circle. If you stand in this new patch that's left behind, you'll gain a stacking debuff, which at 5 will take you into the Delirium Realm. Once one of the patches has transferred a player, it will then despawn, so only 3 players can enter the Delirium per set of Manic Dreads. You want to send 3 DPS into the Delirium Realm just before the boss reaches 100% energy and begins to cast Dark Pulse. This puts a big damage absorption shield on him while he casts for 18 seconds. Everyone needs to slam the boss to damage through the shield to stun him, which interrupts the cast which would otherwise do a huge burst of damage to everyone in all realms. By having the 3 DPS in the Delirium Realm beforehand, it increases your damage output significantly, which should get you through the shield each time it's cast. Once the shield is broken, the 3 DPS should then leave the Delirium Realm by moving to the portal spawned by the first Arcanist. Once you're there, you just hit your extra action button. By leaving early, this gives you enough time for your Hysteria stacks to drop before you need to go back in for the next Dark Pulse cast. For everyone else to deal with is the Dark Summoners. These guys are returned and act the exact same way as the Phase 1 version, except you can now only damage them when you are within the Fear Realm. Shortly after the adds are spawned, all players aside from the 3 DPS that are going into the Delirium Realm should stand on top of the adds portals and then use their extra action button to bring them into the Fear Realm. Once inside, all DPS should just focus on killing the 3 summoners as soon as possible, and once this is done, everyone should then leave by using the portal spawned by the first Arcanist. When everyone is inside the Fear Realm, the boss will use his Maddening Eruption Zones and will still debuff people with Manifest Nightmare. You need to deal with these the exact same way that you did during Phase 2 and 3, by dragging the boss into the zone and having people move away when they get their debuff. Once you manage to kill all the adds in there and you've left, not too long afterwards the boss will cast Dark Pulse. And from here the fight just repeats. So before Dark Pulse is cast, you'll want the 3 DPS to go inside the Delirium Realm, you break the Dark Pulse shield, they then leave the realm, you then get the adds spawn, everyone goes in the Fear Realm and then kills the adds, comes back out, and then again you'll have a Dark Pulse to deal with. And you just keep repeating that until the boss finally dies. But as a final note, when you get the boss to around 10-15% to health and he spawns a new set of adds, it's probably a good idea just to ignore the adds and nuke down the boss instead, as their Dark Tear cast is rather long. To make the boss die even quicker, if healers can deal with it, you might as well just send everyone into the Fear Realm, as the tanks can keep using the Maddening Eruption Zones to make the boss take even more damage. This isn't necessarily needed, but it just makes this last phase that little bit quicker. Thank you very much for watching guys, if you'd like to know more about this encounter, or would just like the guide in a written format with detailed tooltips and images, then do go check out our written work over on Wowhead, a link for that is in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.